you've just bought a new TV and you want to know what all the different connector ports it's sporting at the back are, then you've come to the right place. Over the course of this video, we'll go through all the options you have available, from HDMI to VGA. So stick around if you want to find out which ones you should use and which ones are best avoided if possible. Of course, we can't talk about connector ports without mentioning HDMI, so we may as well start with it. The acronym actually stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface, and it's currently the most widespread display connector out there. You'll find it in most modern displays, TVs, monitors, graphics cards, you name it. But what you should also know is that it's taken HDMI many iterations to get to where it is today, so you won't be able to get the same performance out of each and every HDMI port you've Find. The HDMI 1.4 is the most popular version for anything but 4K. It can deliver full HD resolution at 144Hz, which makes it particularly popular among gamers, but it actually supports resolutions up to 2560 by 1600 at 75Hz, which isn't half bad. And although we said that it's the most popular version of anything but 4K, it actually does support 4K officially. The problem here is that it only supports it at 30Hz, so you can see See why it's less than ideal for this resolution. Other perks for the 1.4 port include the multi-channel audio support, the ability to carry Ethernet data, and AMD FreeSync support. Now, in case you have the HDMI 1.3 port, then you'll still be able to enjoy 1080p resolution in 144Hz, but any version older than 1.3 will max out at 60Hz in 1080p. And if you're interested in 4K, then the HDMI 2.0 is the one you're looking for. It expands the color depth and it's not like it was bad before, but most importantly, it can run 4K at 60Hz. This is definitely the most important improvement, but it's certainly not the only one. These ports also support 21 by 9 aspect ratio and 3D stereoscopic format, both of which were unavailable in previous versions. And the biggest perk of using HDMI 2.0 for lower resolution is that it ups the ante on the refresh rates, allowing up to 144Hz in 1440p and 240Hz in 1080p resolution. Needless to say, the AMD FreeSync support is still there, so that's a plus as well. The newest version of the HDMI port is the HDMI 2.1, which was released in December 2017. And what this version added to the mix was support for dynamic HDR in both 4K and 8K in 120Hz. The dynamic HDR and the new FreeSync 2 will work with the existing cables, but if you want to relish in either 4K or 8K resolutions in 120Hz, then you will have to get the brand new 48G cable. The next item on the list is the DisplayPort, or DP for short. It's not nearly as ubiquitous as HDMI, in fact it's very unlikely that a TV will have it, although you'll certainly find it on modern monitors. The DisplayPort 1.2 is the most relevant version, and it's actually mandatory for gaming monitors with NVIDIA's G-Sync. Of course, FreeSync will also work on DP as well, but if you want G-Sync, then you have to get a monitor with this port. It's kind of like the fingers and thumbs situation. The DisplayPort 1.2 port has an effective bandwidth of 7 17.2 gigabits in HBR2 mode. And what this does is it not only allows for a wide color gamut support, but also for high resolutions and refresh rates, 75 Hz at 4K to be exact. What's more, it offers the ability of multiple video streams through daisy chaining. Now this isn't the latest version of DP, despite being the most popular. So let's see what the newer versions have to offer. The DisplayPort 1.3 version increases the bandwidth even further, which makes 4K possible in 120 Hz. In fact, it supports 5K and 8K as well. The first one will work at 60Hz, but the second will only work at 30Hz. And the benefits of MTS in this version are the ability to daisy chain up to two 4K displays, or as many as four WQHD Plus displays at 60Hz. Now, with such incredible capabilities, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this is the newest version of the port, but it's not. That title goes to the subsequent display port 1.4, which adds support for HDR10 and Rec 2020 color gamut, as well as 8K HDR at 60Hz and 4K HDR at 120Hz. That's just impressive! And the way it's done is by utilizing display stream compression encoding with the 3 to 1 compression ratio. And seeing how we've listed all the other versions already, we should probably mention the mini display port as well, also known as MDP. These ports can be found on some Apple computers and PC notebooks. The resolution they support will vary depending on the version of the implemented display port, but it goes up to 4K, and it's quite versatile. For example, Apple's 
Thunderbolt connector is backwards compatible with MDP, but you can also find MDP to VGA, DVI or HDMI adapters. Then there's the Digital Visual Interface, or DVI. DVI ports are also very popular and you'll find them on most monitors and graphics cards, even the ones integrated into PC motherboards. There are three different DVI ports, but these aren't versions that are built on one another as in the previous example. Instead, which port you need will depend on a type of signal used. DVI-A is used for analog video signal, DVI-D for digital, and DVI-I can be used for both. The thing that DVI has going for it the most right now is how widespread and versatile it is. So, with the right adapters, you can convert it to both VGA and HDMI quite easily. And it's invaluable for when you need to connect an extra monitor to a computer and you don't have the extra ports on your GPU or monitor. Another thing you'll definitely want to make sure of is whether you have the single link or dual link ports. Single link DVI caps out at 1920 by 1200 at 60 Hz. On the other hand, the dual link DVI port can support resolutions up to 2560 by 1600 at 60 Hz. What's even more important for gaming is that it supports 1080p at 144 Hz. That said, most DVI connectors can't transfer sound. Some newer GPUs do enable this, but still, it pales in comparison with the HDMI 1.4 port. So, if you're given an option between these two, always go with the HDMI. It just offers better performance. And finally, there's VGA, the good old video graphics array. And when we say good old, we don't really mean good or old. There isn't much to say about it really. It uses analog video signals, which are best avoided nowadays. And sure, it can easily support 1920 by 1200 resolution at 60 Hz, but the difference in image quality for multi-monitor setups will be practically unnoticeable between it and other solutions. But other problems such as cable length, digital conversion and wire gauge are not to be underestimated. And that's that! If you were waiting for us to crown any of these as the best and the one you should use, then you've come to the wrong video. Our intention was never to pit these ports against each other to see which one will come out on the top. All we wanted was to offer a quick, simple and easy explanation on how they work and what they can do. After all, you won't always have the ability to choose among all of these. And besides, the port you intend to use should never dictate what display and GPU you should use. It's the other way around, actually. Unless, of course, you're aiming for 8K at 60Hz. Then your hands are pretty much tied. Just make sure that both your GPU and display are compatible with a single port. Also, regarding how well they stack up, the thing to keep in mind here is that 1080p at 60Hz will look pretty much identical on all of the digital ports presented. That means HDMI, DP and DVI-D. So if this is the resolution and refresh rate that you plan on using, then don't worry about it too much. Just use whichever port you want. The image won't get better if you use better or more expensive cables. Of course, this doesn't go for analog ports, so we suggest giving VGA a hard pass if possible. Other than that, it'll come down to your GPU and your display. And there you have it! A brief overview and explanation of these four ports. We hope that you found this video helpful, make sure to let us know down in the comments if you did. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.